Does the NBA need dynasties? It's an interesting question because really since the turn of the decade, I think one of the bright spots of this decade of basketball has been the parody. We literally have had, I believe it's the last six champions, like since 2019, we've had a new champion every year. And I think, I know I've really loved that. I think everyone's really loved, you know, not necessarily knowing who's gonna win the championship every year, or like, especially coming on the heels of like the Warriors Cavs era, where it literally felt like every single year, it was gonna be the same script and most likely the same winner. And, and that was just so deflating as NBA fans because you want that level of unpredictability. You don't necessarily wanna feel like it's inevitable that the same two teams are gonna play in the finals year after year. So that's been one of the things I mean, fans have really liked about this era. It's, it's we really just don't know and, and it's a new matchup every year. It's something fresh and there's new storylines and, and new players and new narratives and, and new champions and all that stuff. It's been so fun. And it's interesting because I, I definitely like that kind of parody. I, I really do enjoy it. But I will say, like, it, through all the talk of how awesome it is, I will say that I do kind of miss dynasties. And I do think, as much as we criticize them during the Cavs Warriors era, I do think there is a place for them. And I do think there is a benefit f to them in the sense that, like, I, I just think there's something nice about having... Like a set, first of all, I think there's something cool about knowing that that something big, something massive is happening, something dynastic, like history is being made. Uh, like like there's something that like okay, when we look back on this era, we're gonna think of it as you know whether it's the Warriors or the Lakers or the Bulls era. I, I think there's something cool about you know being part of a significant portion of NBA history in a way that I don't really think exists right now where it's a new champion every year. There's no repeats. There's definitely no three-peats. Like, 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 repeats and three-peats are significant, you know, timestamps in NBA history. And to be able to witness one, to be a part of one, to be a part of the journey, I, I think is, is, is really special. And I think it's something we maybe take for granted during, like, as it's happening. And I also think, you know, as dynasties are sort of happening, or, or repeat, or, and three-peat champions are happening, or, or teams are pursuing them, I think there's something kind of fun about rooting against that or just like having that central figure to sort of look at and and whether you're a diehard fan whether you're a casual NBA fan or whether you're a casual sports fan it, it's something that we keep our eye on constantly and we're constantly watching we're constantly observing like say what you want about the Durant Warriors and how unstoppable they are and how inevitable they were you watched you paid attention you you watched them with so much ferocity I don't think it's a coincidence that those finals were some of the highest rated of the last 10 years it's because as dominant as they were and as inevitable as you felt that they were you wanted to see them lose and, and you were so locked in to see them lose and you were so locked in to just watch everything about them hoping that they would fail there was something about you know having that goliath like figure that was fun to watch whether you were a fan of them or more importantly when you were a fan of the opposing teams and you wanted to see them fail there's something about having that giant like figure hovering over the entire league and that's sort of like dragging the league that's sort of like the big storyline i think there's something to be said about having that central figure it definitely you know it gives again like i said whether you're a dire like dire fans are gonna watch either way but like it was also sort of cool to see casual fans hop on this like bandwagon to watch or like even just casual sports fan be invested in the storyline of you know again let's use the warriors as an example the durant warriors and oh my god are they still good can they still win it are they going to do it? You know, 73 wins before Durant got there. I, I think there was something fun about having that central figure. And so I say all of this, you know, not to sort of tell you, hey, I think we should have, I, I wish we would have dynasties back. Um, but I do, I do think there is a place for them in, in history. I, I don't think they're like as bad as, as like the Warriors era made it seem. Because I also think in defense of dynasties, there's a difference between dynasties and what those warriors were because those warriors were truly like unstoppable of unstoppable like, and 73 win team that adds kevin durant like that was just that was nothing we've ever seen before but if you go back to say the miami heat the heatles the big three heat where yes they won back-to-back -back championships made four straight finals and yes it sort of felt like they would be there every year but i don't know if this is hindsight just based on the results um or revisionist history but like they still felt beatable like and, and like we saw that time and time again whether it was boston in 2012 or indiana in 2013 like 
or then again, like San Antonio in 2014, Dallas in 2011, like as much as they were like that central figure and the team we all focused on, they were still beatable. So I, I think the difference is like, I'm totally fine with this era right now where it's, it's a new winner every year. I think that's so cool. And I, and I do think that like with the new CBA and with just like the amount of talent that's going around the NBA, I don't know if a dynasty will ever exist. Like, I'm very curious to see who's going to be the next repeat champion. I don't know when the next time we're going to see three-peat is because we haven't seen it since the Shaq and Kobe Lakers in the early 2000s. But I will say I, I do sort of miss the, the dynasty and, and, like, the pursuit and, like, the, the watch and, and, like, everyone just, like, focusing in on, like, this one singular team and their pursuit of, of a repeat, of a three-peat, of that kind of history. And, and I do think there is a place for it because, like, the Warriors were just, like, a different... I, I think our perception of dynasties is sort of, you know, scarred from what the Warriors were, where they were just so inevitable, so dominant, whereas I think a more realistic interpretation of what a dynasty or, or like, you know, just that central figure is, it's more of like the Heat in the early 2010s, the big three Miami Heat, where like, they're great, they're the team to beat in a certain sense, but like, they weren't so great that like, you just felt like it was inevitable, like you still kind of felt like this team could be beat whether it was, you know, with like the veterans of the Celtics or like if you had the size of Indiana. And I think that was sort of like the best of both worlds where it's like, they're that team, they're fun to watch, but you still feel like they're, they can be beat, uh, which is I think what more a dynasty or like that kind of team is supposed to be versus like the Warriors where it was just like, they were just far and away better than everyone. So not necessarily saying one is better than the other. I, I There's stuff I like about dynasties, there's stuff I like about this era. I just think it's kind of funny because, you know, in this era, where everyone talks about how awesome it is. I do think there's something that I miss about the dynasty area. Like I know people talk about on Twitter a lot, like which team is gonna own this decade? And you know, we're four or five years in, we have five champions and it doesn't really feel like there's an answer. And with all the parody, I don't know if there's going to be an answer. And is that the worst thing in the world? No, but again, like I said a few times during this video, I do think, you know, we've some become, I think too scarred and too jaded from what the Warriors did to us in terms of how we perceive one overarching team of the decade whereas i think in a more realistic interpretation i think there are still benefits and there is something fun about having that kind of team being the focus of the league and i don't know if we're ever going to get it again uh with the way the nba is right now but like there is something i miss about it and that's just something i wanted to say so i don't know what do you think do you miss dynasties do you ultimately still love this era of basketball let me know what you think in the comments and peace